What's up guys, my name's Austin and you're watching Econometrics with Austin. In today's video we're getting into we're getting into it deep with all the latest news going on today. So first of all we're gonna cover Trump's new stimulus package. What all's in it? What we know is in it, it hasn't completely passed, but what we think he wants. Uh, we're also covering the Fed, uh, Federal Reserve lowering interest rates. A surprise lowering of interest rates on a Sunday night. Sounds sketchy to me. And in the stock market, I'm uh, going to go over how the stock market is doing, some predictions uh, based on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. I use the Dow. It's the biggest average of industrials for the United States. So that's what we're going to go over in today's video. Let's get to it. So to start, we're going to be going over Trump's stimulus package. So the big ticket item that Trump, President Trump is wanting to get through is his payroll tax cut. And so they've done some... Um, estimation on how much it would cost and he's looking at 949 billion dollar social security tax cut and 289 billion dollar cut in medicare now this doesn't mean that that money will not go towards social security or medicare it simply means that the u.s taxpayer will not be paying for it so some of you might be wondering what is the payroll what is a payroll tax so by definition here in the united states uh, the payroll tax is paid partly by you, the work, and your employer. So you pay 6.2% and your employer pays 6.2%. And then it goes towards Social Security and Medicare, as you can imagine. So the reason that Trump is wanting to cut this is because it means more money in your pocket, the consumer. And it also means less cost to your employer or the producer. So and the reason why that is beneficial is because the more money you have, the way that the conservative way of looking at the economy, kind of like trickle down in a way, is that the more money you have, the more willing you are to spend that money. And the more money you spend, the better the economy will be. And also, it goes the same way for your employer. If they're spending less on taxes, that means they'll have more money to spend on hiring new people, uh, making capital purchases, that sort of thing. So that's the main reason that Trump is targeting the payroll taxes is so that you and your boss or employer will have more money in your pockets. Uh, another part of this package is paid sick leave for hourly workers. Um, and he's wanting to push through uh, some money for small business loans which is once again good uh, for small businesses because this virus, this is the main reason for all this is the virus, as you know. Can't fully say the name of it because I've heard uh, through the grapevine that YouTube doesn't like it. So we're just going to call it the virus or we're going to call it Rona. I think I like Rona better. We'll call it Rona. So Rona is obviously calling all this, causing all this to happen. And uh, it's really, it's affecting small businesses. As we can see, you know, um, schools are shutting down. The All the government offices are shutting down. Businesses are telling people to work at home. So the small business that relies on office workers, because, like, let's say the small, a small restaurant in a downtown of any city in the U.S., normally their biggest customer are people, office workers. Well, if the office tells everybody to go home, nobody's there to eat lunch. So they're losing money. Small businesses are hurting pretty bad. And these uh, small business loans with low interest rates will really help them get over, be able to you take out a loan that doesn't cost a whole lot just to continue paying your employees and to keep from laying them off while we get through this. And then once we get through it, the idea is that the loan is at such a low interest rate and it's from the federal government so they're not going to come steal or not steal but repo all your stuff like a bank would so you, you're able to pay it back easier and quicker with less stress they're also they did get the free testing testing pass for the virus or rona so free testing is available now which is great doesn't matter your income level doesn't matter if you have insurance it's free for everybody and then on Friday, he declared a federal emergency that passed through $50 billion in emergency spending, which we'll get to that in a little bit. 
and with all of this these uh, new rules and regulations he's passing he's been able to get um, to change the way testing is done with the coronavirus because before Friday um, it really took effect today on Sunday but before then you couldn't just go get tested for the for the Rona because for one they didn't have the test kits and number two when you did get tested it had to be sent to the CDC or a state lab and there's not very many of those and uh, they're not nearly as efficient. Everything was having to be done manually. Now, with this new rules that he's placed, they put into place on Friday. He passed through some brand new test kits through the USDA. And he also made it so that private labs could begin testing for Corona. It didn't have to, for the Rona. It didn't have to go through the state or the federal government. And then... He also, he came out with all the major CEOs of Walmart, Kroger, uh, Target, and um, announced that they would start setting up drive through Rona testing centers. And um, that's, that's going to help out a lot with trying to cut down on the number of people infected. And also part of this whole stock market issue is this big... Uh, price war going on between Russia and Saudi Arabia. So to try and help that out, like the price of oil fell like 30% overnight. Crazy numbers. It's down to like 31 bucks a barrel. And uh, uh, President Trump announced that he would start buying oil to try and... So there was... The way it works, there was a supply shock. Supply shock, which drove price down because they started flooding the market with oil to drive the price down. So to try and offset this supply shock, President Trump is going to start buying oil for the U.S. reserves at such a low price, which is it's a good idea anyway. So another big thing going on is just a couple of hours ago, the Fed decided to lower the prime interest rate, the federal rate, down to, they haven't fully announced it yet, but it's going to be 0 or 0.25%. And as you can see in the graph that I put up on the screen, the way the interest rate, the way the Fed uses the interest rate is in the good times. As you can see, between 2010 and 2019, the rate was at a quarter percent where it's very flat. And as the economy approves, the Fed starts to bump that rate up to slow down inflation and to also keep up with as the economy grows, they bump the rate up just a little bit, a little at a time. In these darker lines that you see, our recession. So when there's a recession, they drop the rate. As you can tell, the 2008 crisis, the housing crisis, they dropped the rate by huge numbers to try and boost the economy. And the reason why they do this is because a lower interest rate makes borrowing money cheap. So having the interest rate at a zero to a quarter percent makes money cheap to borrow, meaning that your interest paid back is below the discount rate. And a discount rate is a mathematical number. It's a formula used to calculate how much money today is worth tomorrow. So is money today worth more tomorrow? Or is your money today worth less tomorrow? Most of the time it's worth less. So you having a interest rate of 0 to 0.25% effectively makes the interest rate a negative. Because you, you're using someone else's money. To do whatever you want to do and over the long run the money is worth more than you're paying in interest so it's helping consumers so like during the housing crisis the reason why they cut it so low was to try and get more people to buy houses because nobody was buying houses and you see the the interest rate was about five and a half percent before it started and they dropped it all the way down to a quarter percent over two years but right now, it's more about liquidity. We're having some liquidity issues in the market. And the Fed is helping solve that by lowering the interest rate so that people can take loans to cover their liquidity issues and hopefully they don't sell their stocks to cover their liquidity issues, which is what we've been seeing. So 
you would think that this is a good thing, but it turns out it's not 100% good. So as you can see, earlier this year, they or in 2019, they lowered it to 2%. A couple weeks ago, they lowered it to 1.5%. And now today, they cut it by a whole 1%. And the normally, your basis point, your basis percent, they cut by 0.25 to 0.5%. Cutting it a whole percent kind of sends mixed signals to the market. And these mixed signals are telling the market that we're in worse shape than we thought we were. That the coronavirus is hurting the economy more than we thought it was going to or than we thought it was currently hurting. So, and the Fed doing this while markets are closed on a Sunday night when they normally meet Mondays and Wednesdays. They've canceled those meetings and decided to just cut the rates on a Sunday night by a huge percentage while the markets are closed. It's, it's, it's an interesting move. Very interesting move. But the Fed also announced on sometime last week they were going to repurchase $500 billion in T-bills and $200 billion in mortgage, mortgage-backed securities. So a T-bill is the Treasury bills, which are bonds. They're trying to stabilize the bond market because it's been on a roller coaster, just like everything else. And they're trying to also, with the mortgage-backed securities, they're trying to get banks to lend more money out to strapped businesses is what they're doing there. All right, so moving on into stocks. So what we're looking at here is the Dow Jones over the last month. As you can see, it's been a wild ride. Around this time in February is when coronavirus started showing up here in the U.S., and you can see these big drops in the price. Big drops. And then they have big spikes where the price comes back up and then drops right back down. Back up and down. Up and down. Up and down. Here's a big drop on March 9th. And it spikes back up on the 10th. And the 11th into the 12th we have our worst day ever for the Dow Jones. Dropping 2300 points in a single day. And a lot of, in here they had to do market stop, stop trading for 15 minutes because it had dropped 7%. Just crazy, absolutely crazy. And we continued on to have big, we'd go up a couple hundred points and we'd drop down a thousand. Then we'd go back up eight or nine hundred points and drop a thousand. And then Friday, when Trump came out and announced his stimulus package, we had the best ever day on the Dow Jones, up 1,900 points. 1,985 points this past Friday. So you would think, with everything announced, the stimulus package announced, the new, the Fed dropping rates, that we'd be doing good, right? No. <laughs> so what I was predicting is that, you know, we had a 1,900-point gain here, as you can see, on Friday. I expected to have some sell-off because a lot of these investors, especially experienced investors, they're buying on these lows. And whenever it goes up, they're selling out. And that's why we're having these big swings up and down, up and down. So you expect if the price rose 1985 points, it's already up and down, up and down. People are going to start selling because that's, that's a huge swing. A lot of money was made yesterday or on Friday. So, you know, I was predicting we'd have a drop on Monday, but because of what the Fed announced and because of what uh, the president has been talking about, we would turn around positive, maybe flat, by the end of trading on Monday. But that's not what's happening. So since the Fed cut rates at 7 o'clock Friday night, Dow futures are down 1,041 points, or 4.6%, almost completely wiping out our gain from Friday. Already, the market's not even open yet. This is futures. And they had to halt trading because it was so low. The T-bill fell 3.08 percentage points, and it's down to 0.6484. Like, I don't even know. I'm hoping, you know, there's a huge futures drop. More than likely, we're going to be down... 1500 points that's what I'm gonna say 1500 points on Monday so let's get into this act my active trader pro account to where maybe you can see a little better 
than on uh, than on what I was just on. These big dips. What you want to look for are big green bars here and big reds. As you can see here on the ninth, big or on the sixth actually, we had a big buy-in. Then on the morning of the ninth, sale. And here is our big drop on the 12th. And then here's Friday, where we had 1900 point gain in one afternoon. And here is, down here you probably can see it better on the RSI scale. The green line means that it's overbought. The red line means that it's oversold. As you can see, these big ups and downs that you're seeing in the Dow, where it gets close to being oversold and then comes back up. Then it starts going up and it goes back down to oversold. And here's the big 2300 point dip right here on the 12th. And all the other ups and downs and then this Friday's 1900 point gain. So, you know, it's, it's really, the stock market is unpredictable. You can't predict it at all. But what I have to say, my position is, whenever you see these big dips here on the 12th, for me, that means buy. Buy, buy, buy. Now, of course, you can't just buy the Dow Jones Industrial. You can buy index, but not this. Pick out stocks that are underperforming, way underperform, over, undersold like this right here. When you see this, that means buy. Because other investors are looking at that, and they're going to see, oh, wow, this is under, oversold. And they're going to start buying, too. So that's what I'm saying. I'm going to say, watch what happens tomorrow. There's going to be a big dip. And whenever there's the big dip and it's just going down, 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 they're probably going to halt trading for 5 minutes, 15 minutes. Might come up a little bit, but I'm, ex I'm thinking there's going to be another big dip. And whenever that dip gets to start slowing down, that's why I say buy. Go ahead and pull the execution. Buy something. You know, pick out a stock, something that you like. So on the 12th, when we had this big dip, I bought Geo and Bear. I got them at pretty good prices, and on Friday, it made me 300 bucks. So I'm still I'm still showing that I'm down 200, and that's from buying this other bit of Geo from at an all-time high. But it wasn't an all-time high, but it was right before all this coronavirus mess kicked in, and that's why I'm showing down 200. But I mean, I made 300 bucks on Friday on a $3,000 investment. That's 10% return in one day. That's extremely, extremely rare. And I should sell and get rid of it just because I made 300 bucks, you know. And then whenever this next dip comes, buy back into something else. But these are high dividend stocks. And that's honestly the reason why I bought these. I was going to collect the dividends on them and sell. But anyways, that's for another day and another topic. So that's what I was wanting to go over. Just go over... Uh, my predictions for tomorrow, uh, what Trump's got going on, and what the Fed has going on. But I believe that'll be it for us today. So uh, thank you guys for watching the video. I really do appreciate it, and I hope to see you back in the next video.